Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to induct into the Collingwood Hall of Fame Mr Ted Rao. To accept this uh, wonderful accolade, I'd like to call on Ted Rao's grandson, John Rao, to come forward. Come up, John. Thanks, Ed. Look, thank you, Ed. Thank you, Gary. Thank you to the, to the, um, the selection committee and all at Collingwood involved in the, in the selection of my grandfather for this, this, this fantastic award. I remember when Ed um, first called me to break the news uh, about my grandfather's selection. We talked about how there is no greater honour um, for a football club than to um, bestow this award on an individual. So it's a very proud night for our family indeed, so we really thank you. And I think it's, it's, it's important to remember that um, we remember the deeds of our current players and the recent players, but I think it's also important that we understand that the history and the, the folklore and the traditions of this great club were, were built on the, um, on the deeds of the players of the past. Players like my grandfather and like Dick Lee and like the, the Penhams and the Condons and, in the early days, and then the Colliers and the Coventries, and, and then um, enriched by the next generation of players, including the ones that we, that we support today. I know my, my father used to tell me great stories about my grandfather. And I remember him telling me about, um, he used to go to training as a very young boy and watch my grandfather at kicking practice after, after training. Let me tell you, nothing like you would know kicking practice today. Because what he would do, he would go to one end of Victoria Park and place kick the ball from the goal square to nearly the centre. My father used to say he was a prodigious place kicking, a very accurate one. And what he would then do is then place kick the ball from the centre again, aiming at the goal square at the other end. And then reverse the process and go backwards and forwards until he was happy with the quality of his kicking and the accuracy of his kicking. How times change. <laughs> I can tell you now, my, my grandfather died about well, nearly 50 years ago. But I have memories of him as well, and one that really sticks in my mind. I was a very a young boy, probably nine or ten, and I was at training with my, my father, and my grandfather happened to be there, and he was probably about 80 at this stage. And he asked me if I'd like to go down into the rooms after training. Well, stupid question. Of course I would. So I remember walking down the race off Victoria Park, down under, under, um, under, the, under the stand, and the, the room was covered in matting, and then I remember seeing Murray Wiedemann and Bill Sarong and Ken Turner and Thorough Merritt and all the guys that were idols of, of, of my youth as a, as a nine-year-old kid barracking for Collingwood. I mean, what a memory for me to carry for the rest of my life. Let me tell you, while, while um, there's been no Collingwood um, person play for the club since my father last played 100 years ago, it hasn't stopped the black and white running through all generations of our family. My mother would take me to the footy, take my, si my sister Wendy and myself, I'd take Amy and Simon to the footy as well when I grew up. The whole family is here tonight to celebrate the occasion, including my mother who turned 90 recently, so it's, it's fantastic for us all to be here. I do, I do remember being here in this very room in 1997 when my grandfather was nominated for the, um, the, the team of the century. And uh, my daughter Amy, who Ed mentioned wasn't very well that night, and I, I thought, well, it would be a good idea for for me to get the, um, where is it? The invitation for that night, which is here, signed by her three fa favourite players, Bucks of course, Peter Dacos, who I saw before, and Sav Rocker, and to see if they would send a message to my daughter, a get well message, which they all graciously did. And Eddie, I even got yours, mate. It's on here. It's on here as well. That's great. And as Eddie then said, that wasn't the end of the story because my daughter then applied for a job at Collingwood several years later got that job and then became um, Gary's um, um, executive assistant, a job she's held for the last seven or eight years. So I'm so proud that my grandfather's legacy at Collingwood has been able to be um, continued by, um, by his great-granddaughter. Finally, I'd like to say, um, many of you probably have uh, a book that was produced to celebrate the Collingwood centenary called A Century of the Best. And in it, um, it tells the stories of a hundred of the key players of Collingwood up to that stage. And there's a, there is a chapter on the grandfather. And in it, the, the, the author, Michael Roberts, in the second last um, paragraph, talks about how my grandfather retired at the end of uh, the 1914 season to take up full-time career as a bookmaker at the races, which he did for the next 50 years. Um, but he continued to train at Collingwood in 1915 
because he wanted to stay fit. And as you saw before, um, he was actually then approached by the club at the end of that season to play one last game, which happened to be in the grand final. The last paragraph in the chapter on my grandfather, that, um, uh, Michael Roberts wrote, I think really best sums up the contribution my grandfather made to this football club. And I remember the quote, I can quote it. He said, despite his age and lack of max match practice, Raoul was still amongst the best players in a losing side. Given his great career and the sort of person he was, it was only fitting that his final game for the club had such a romantic era about it, because his story was truly an amazing one. Thank you so much.